The world of modern telecommunications has enhanced each and every one of our lives. Technological breakthroughs have revolutionized our vehicles of communication. The use of cellular telephones enable consumers to lead more productive and secure lives. They increased our mobility and made it easier to stay in touch with family, friends, co-workers, and business contacts. Cellular phones assist in our personal and public safety, in addition to playing a vital role in emergency situations, such as the World Trade Center bombing, they are used to report crimes, accidents, car trouble, and drunk driving. However, consumers are not the only ones benefiting from cellular technology. Nationwide, cellular bandits are ringing up an estimated $1 million a day in fraudulent cellular telephone calls. Now you, the consumer, can take steps to protect yourselves from these smooth operators. Hello, I'm Jerry Orbach, your host for Smooth Operator. For the next half hour, we'll explore cellular telephone fraud and the issues of concern to all consumers. We'll be discussing the various types of cellular fraud, specific measures consumers can take to prevent and redress incidents of cellular fraud, and how the private and public sectors are combating cellular fraud, who these smooth operators are, and for what purposes they're using fraudulent cellular telephone service. Our panelists will be providing pertinent information for all consumers. Joining me for this segment of Smooth Operator is Lee Kaywork, Corporate Vice President of Revenue Requirements for Macaw Cellular Communications. Lee is also the Chairman of the Cellular Telecommunications Industry Association Fraud Task Force. Welcome, Lee. Thanks, Jerry. Nice to see you. Now, apparently, cellular fraud has become big business. The term cellular fraud is defined as the act of obtaining cellular service by fraudulent means and thereby not paying for the service. Lee, how large is this cellular fraud problem? It's about a $350 million a year problem in North America and in New York metropolitan area. It's probably closer to $35 million a year. Wow. I, I understand that there are different types of cellular fraud, uh, access fraud, subscription fraud, stolen phone fraud, and call cell scams. Would you uh, please define these sure, for us? Very, very quickly. First thing, you have to understand the validation process we use. Every cellular phone has its unique uh, serial number. We call it electronic serial number. And when, we, when you uh, have service, we provide a mobile identification number. That's a 10-digit number. Right. We validate those two, and that's how we know it's a good customer. Uh, the primary ways that fraud is perpetuated on us electronically is tumbling, where they literally change that number on a continuing basis, therefore the term tumbling, uh, or counterfeiting, where they take a legitimate uh, electronic serial number, mobile identification number, mm -hmm. and they just put that into another phone. Uh, then the things like subscription fraud, where quite frankly they simply take somebody's good information and run it through our process, and it looks like they're good till about 30 days till we catch up with them. Uh -huh. uh, other kinds of things like the call cell operation, uh, that's where they're on the street, quite frankly, competing against us. They're selling service, usually internationally, uh, for about 15 bucks. You call anywhere you want for 10 minutes. Uh, they're probably using some of the other scams, tumbling, counterfeiting, mm -hmm. or subscription to perpetuate that crime uh, quite, quite extensive uh, in a number of areas. Well, do consumers uh, have to pay for the fraudulent calls that appear on their bills? No, they do not. Uh, generally speaking, the uh, cellular carriers uh, will credit them fully for these uh, types of calls because, quite frankly, the consumer has no control over uh, mm -hmm. the crime that's being committed. Wow. Well, we know the cellular industry has declared an all-out war on these cellular bandits and has teamed up with local and federal law enforcement agencies to track and prosecute these high-tech criminals. Uh, but tell me, are there other measures that the cellular industry has taken to combat this fraud? Absolutely. Well, we've spent about $7 million over the past two years trying to uh, both train uh, all of our employees on how fraud enters the system, train law enforcement on not only how the crime is committed, but how the, the crime is complementary to other types of crime, such as drugs uh, or other uh, uh, activities that goes on in the, in the criminal community. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also uh, very much been involved in investigations 
uh, at the street level to help us understand how the fraud enters our system and then provide that to law enforcement as well. And clearly we're also working on toughening up the, uh, both the federal and state legislative activities so that we can get uh, higher levels of felony crimes and mm -hmm. make sure that the, uh, the legislation deals with the crime relative to how it's perpetuating. What are the signs that uh, consumers should look for to alert them that somebody might be compromising their cellular numbers? Well, a couple of things. Number one, if you start receiving a lot of incoming phone calls from people you don't know, or mm -hmm. they're speaking a language you don't understand, that's certainly one way. Uh, if you have difficulty placing outgoing calls in areas you've never had a problem before, that might also be a sign. If you have voicemail and you can't all of a sudden you can't retrieve your messages, that's another possibility. Uh -huh. And finally, just check your bill. And if there's any unusual calls on it, call your carrier. Right. If consumers suspect fraud, who should they call? They should, they the should, carrier? They should call the carrier, uh -huh. 611. Uh, most carriers will answer customer care. Uh, say the one here in New York, if you dial 1-800-SELL-TIPS, he'll also uh, help you there. I see. And what steps can consumers take to help prevent this fraud in the first place? Well, first thing, the, the, the numbers I talked about earlier, the ESN and the mobile identification number, protect those. Those are important right. numbers. Criminals like to get hold of that number. Uh, lock your mobile up. You, you go, valet parking, don't, don't let your mobile sit there. Take the handset out. Uh, eliminate international calling. If you don't have to make international calls, call your carrier up and say, take that service off my phone. Nine times out of ten, that's the kind of calling that the, right. the criminal element wants. Uh, if you have a stolen phone, report it immediately, both to your carrier and to law enforcement. And finally, if you, if you have to lend your phone to someone, make sure you know who they are and uh, don't let that phone out of your sight. Have them make the call right in front of right you. Right in front of you. Well, thanks, Lee, for giving us an overview of the uh, different types of cellular fraud and how the industry is combating fraud and tips for consumers on how they can detect and prevent cellular fraud. Thanks again, Lee. Thank you. With me now is Susan Miller, a telecommunications policy analyst with the City of New York, who will be describing a reenactment of a call cell scam we'll be showing you. Susan? Thanks, Jerry. Our first call cell scene recreates the crime of selling fraudulently obtained cellular telephone service on the street using counterfeit cellular phones. At the conclusion of the reenactment, Don Delaney will give the law enforcement ramifications of these acts. Here's my number. It took long enough. For you, an extra three minutes. We aim to please. Step into my office. So, uh, who are we calling today? We're calling my boyfriend in Sicily. Ooh. Come on, what's taking so long? Buongiorno, signor. Hold on. Hold on a second. You can go. New York State and federal law enforcement authorities are well aware of the smooth operator who would run a curbside call selling operation using a cellular phone from a car. Uh, federal and state law enforcement authorities have been and will continue to arrest those involved in this type of crime. Joining me now on Smooth Operator is Rosanna De Maria, a Manhattan Assistant District Attorney and Chief of the Organized Crime Narcotics Unit. Welcome, Rosanna. Thank 
Adieu.